welcome to another episode of Bright Mike. I'm Liz. I'm Sam. And it's high school hell month. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more nightmarish than high school. Absolutely. We don't need no education. <laughs> <laughs> so we're topping off this episode, this month, with two 90s iconic films. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Both came out in 98. Top tier. Top tier. Hey, it's still 90s. I know. But it's. I, I just think it was funny. Like, I, as I was, like, taking notes, I was like, oh, this one came out in 98. And then I went to flip the next one. And I'm like, also 98. Also very similar. That's what, I, that's what I was thinking, too. I was like, these are so similar that, like, oh, I don't even know which one came out first. Oh, like, either. I didn't check. Like, by a month. But, like, yeah, so similar and like, with the theme and the idea. And then, can we just talk about how both of these movies look like they're from the 90s? Abso-fucking-lutely. We got full, like, Creed offspring soundtrack. Yes. Oh, my God. And the fashion. Oh, f- first of all. The fashion. <laughs> I'll get to the slang. But can I just say, so, like, I, we were born in the early 90s, like, 90, 91. My aunt is 10 years older than me, so I basically, like, grew up with, like, a big sister. So I knew all the kid stuff. I also knew all, like, the teen stuff because I had her. Some of the slang, I'm like, um, I don't remember anyone using that, do you? And she was like, absolutely not. So where did they make this shit up? I want to know. We'll get to it. I'll bring it up. Movie slang. <laughs> I don't understand it. Oh, my God. Katie Holmes, too. I I hate her. We'll get into it. <laughs> hate it if you're listening <laughs> I don't like you. And I think we're doing another movie with her this month, too. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's we'll <see>. fine. <laughs> it's all good. Um, yeah, so it was interesting. They're, I think they're a good pairing, though, because they're so similar. I think so, too. And so heavily involved in the high school realm. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, they literally both take place in, like, high schools the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, if you haven't guessed already, I don't even think we introed the movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would probably be a good idea. <laughs> we are talking about both movies from 1998, Disturbing Behavior and The Faculty. Starting off, we're going to do The Faculty, which came out in 1998. Sorry, Robert Rodriguez's The Faculty. Goddamn right. <laughs> Currently has a 6.5 out of 10 on IMDb. It has a 55% on Rotten Tomatoes. That seems about right. Ugh. This yeah. movie, man. This movie's great. I love this movie. It has <laughs> everyone episode. in it. Yes. That's it. That's my rating. <laughs> everybody, it's, everybody should watch it. So many people in this movie. Yes. Anyone that was any sort of big teen slash early 20s actor is in this movie. I'm so excited Even to talk about this movie. I feel like I'm already jumping like all over the place. It's so fucking Because there's so many things I want to talk about. So yeah, the cast of characters. Holy shit. I think, oh, okay, I don't think this was, was this Elijah Wood's first movie? No, no it wasn't. Wasn't he in Back it's to the somebody's. Future Part 2? I think oh. that was his first, I think he was the little kid playing the arcade game. Oh, yeah. It's like a bit role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear that's his first movie. I, but I feel like this movie was like, it came out before all of these people were like really famous. Yes. It's got, let's run through it. It's got uh, Selma Hayek. It's got B.B. Newworth. It's got the guy that plays the T-1000. It's oh, got Robert Jord- Patrick. Yes. Jordana Brewster. John Elijah Stewart. Wood. John <laughs> Stewart. Who else? Oh, Famke Jansen. Uh, it's got Clea Duvall Piper in Laurie. it. Yeah, Piper Laurie. Uh, Josh Hartnett. I know I'm missing a bunch of people. What? Usher? Usher? Oh, yeah. Usher making his film. <laughs> <laughs> was this? Yeah, this was pre-She's All That. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Ooh. random. I know. I know. It's yeah. It's got a shit ton of people in it. It's wild. I wonder how they got these all these random people to be in this movie. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like they must have had like I'm just picturing like one of those like what they have in like high school or like college hallways where they have like the little pieces of paper that you pull. <laughs> They're like open casts and calls for this movie <laughs> called The Faculty, and like people just like randomly showed up. Yes, it was like people thought they were getting cast for like all different genres of movie, and then they said, "Anyway, you're gonna be in a teen <laughs> horror." And they said, "Oh, sure." <laughs> yeah, oh, I okay. need I need money for rent this month. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and then I also want to discuss the. I think this was like a just a token '90s movie thing where they before the movie starts, there's a preview of the movie. <laughs> With the soundtrack information. <laughs> Full Get it on moment. cassette. <laughs> Video and DVD. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my, I love, what, what is that? Now available on home video yep. and DVD. Now DVD. All right. Interesting. Video cassette. Oh my God. I know. Get your soundtrack on a, a cassette tape. Yeah. And so they Not had, the, they had like the Creed music video in the beginning of the love video. It. It was so great. It was so awful. Oh my God. Okay. Well, this movie is about aliens. It's about Josh Hartnett's hair. <laughs> it, it's about let's let's talk about Josh Hartnett's hair. Also matching the same energy as Famke Jansen's bangs. Oh yeah. Which both you had said it. They both match someone else's iconic bangs. I know. I put a poll on Twitter of who who wore it better, <laughs> Josh Hartnett's hair or Gail Weathers' bangs. Yikes. That's some <sighs> choppy late '90s shit. Oh my god. I love it. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, and then it's so iconic. It's like I don't know. I feel like as as someone who went to cosmetology school, Sam, how mm. on a scale of zero to a hundred, how offended are you? Are you by Josh Hartnett's Five hair? Five hundred percent. <laughs> Which is so sad because Luke, he was like, oh my god, he's the coolest. Zeke is the best. His hair is so cool. His hair is cool. Ew. Did you watch the movie? <laughs> Did you even watch the movie? Did you even go here? It is not cool. It is not okay. The bang work in this movie is offensive and aggressive, and I won't stand for it. <laughs> I'm personally offended. <laughs> personally been victimized by Josh Hartnett's hair. Absolutely. It looks like someone, like, was blind that cut his hair. See, now, Mike had told us that the screen, the screenplay, the screenplay oh, guy? Oh, yeah. Was Kelly, Kevin Williamson. Yes. Who also did Scream. Yes. So... Was this, like, in his script, like, must have very aggressive bangs? <laughs> was <Scary>. that <laughs> That'll scare him, is the very aggressive, overworked bangs. Well, then he must have did it for Gail Weathers, too. That's what I'm saying. Like, like Oh, wait, like no, did, but he didn't write Scream 3, did he? Oh, no. I don't mm, think so. Because I think he was writing this. What did Mike tell us? Mike, if you're listening, please phone in. <laughs> please phone in now. <laughs> I don't want to get read as the uh, resident Scream... I'll look it up right now. Yeah. Live on air. We're looking it up just for you, Michael, and everyone else listening. Who cares? (laughs) He's going to kill us right now. He is going to kill us. Um, Uh, But anyway, this movie is about aliens, essentially. Um, And I feel like on a deeper level, it talks about how people in high school just do feel alienated by specific... No, absolutely not. This (laughs) is not that. (laughs) Scream 3. So he's credited as a writer. Hmm. It's in characters. Like a character writer. So the bangs. So yeah, oh, it does. I mean, yes, I'm onto something. Kevin Williamson likes a choppy, aggressive. Kevin, bang. if you're listening, please vote. <laughs> <laughs> the lines are open. <laughs> Our number is five five five. Bang! Could you imagine if we actually had an open line of people calling? <laughs> I would hate that. Incredible, <laughs> right. like Doctor Drew. <laughs> Please vote in your thoughts. I would love that. I what are your thoughts on the faculty? <laughs> it sucked. Oh, and so do you. Bye bye. Click. <laughs> I have the power here at the power board, the switchboard. Honestly, you're blocked, you're banned for life. Um, Oh, we should work on that. Yeah, I think that we should add that to, like, a segment of our show. I think so. I think so. Um, yeah, so, coming-of-age film, I guess. Yes, with aliens. So, yeah, so, basically, we start off with, like, the, the principal of the school getting locked in. And I guess, she, I don't know, they had, like, a meeting, a faculty meeting late at night, and she goes back for her keys, a chase ensues because Robert Patrick, a.k.a. the T-1000, T- T- 1000? 1000? Mm-hmm. Uh, is now alienated. <laughs> yeah, he was attacked by someone on the football field, and now he's attacking other mem- members of the faculty. Yeah. Which is the title of the movie, holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, so, and then, so we get, like, a glimpse of her, like, running around the school, being chased by him, he's real creepy, real aggressive, and, uh, then she goes, because she sees Piper Laurie outside, all of the, all of the doors have been changed Mm -hmm. in the entire place, uh, so she goes, she sees Piper Laurie's character, she goes to her for help, but turns out she's in on it with the T-1000. It's (laughs) awful. So, unfortunately, the, the she gets it. She gets stabbed. So we think. Well, we think she's dead. Allegedly. Yeah. 
Which then leads to our introduction of our cast of characters. Absolutely. Full Breakfast Club style. We yes. have Zeke, who is played by Josh Hartnett, who's a complete, like, burnout druggie. <laughs> yeah, he sucks. He's, like, a... He's a drug dealer, but also he sells, like, porn and, like, other, like, <laughs> random shit out of the trunk of his car, um, which the teacher, Miss Burke, played by Famke Jansen, like, catches him multiple times doing it, but she is, like, a super pushover, like, very, like, meek, so, she, you know, she's like, you can't be doing this on school grounds, and he's like, well, I'm sitting on my car, and that's my property, so that's... He's such a dick I can to her. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have... Stokely, resident sci-fi nerd and loner. And goth. <laughs> and goth, played by Clea Duvall, um, who was, like, the total bitch from She's All That, like, the art nerd who ends up getting her face painted like a clown. I think that's her. She's in that movie. I just don't... I think that's her. Yes. Uh, we've got Delilah, played by Jordana Brewster, resident HBIC, cheerleader, head Journalist. of the newspaper. <laughs> yes, like, very ambitious, breaks up with Stan... The head football Jack guy, dude. captain, <laughs> who, like, doesn't want to play anymore. Yeah. He's over it. And so. then Casey is yeah. the final, who is uh, played by Elijah Wood, who's adorable. <laughs> we love him. He's, like, the photographer slash, like, quiet kid, yeah. kind of. Um, he's and meek. <laughs> he's the catalyst for this whole movie, essentially, because he finds the little alien pod, <laughs> uh, and he takes it to John Stewart, the science teacher, and he's like, look what I found! And when they, like, dissect it, they're like, oh, this is really weird, it, it really, like, comes from, like, the water, so what's it doing here? And when they toss, like, when they um, accidentally spill water on it, it, like, starts to move. So they throw it in a fish tank, and not only does it, like, come to life and sprout little, like, tentacle feelers, yeah, but... It, uh, it replicates, it self-replicates, and, uh, they're like, oh, holy shit, and it bites Jon Stewart, and he's like, oh, god damn it, uh, <laughs> son of a bitch, but essentially I feel like that's what turns him, yeah. um, so, but we don't see that right away, um, after that, we essentially follow, like, Casey and Delilah they're on a mission, they're gonna expose the faculty for being super weird, and they want to get to the bottom of it. And while they sneak into the faculty lounge, they have to hide in the closet because we get the T-1000 and Piper Laurie, and they pick their next target, who is Selma Hayek as the nurse, and they, like, tongue-fuck the shit out of her ear and, like, infect oh, yeah. her. And they're like, oh, my God! It's and then slimy. <laughs> exactly. And then there's a body in the closet that forces them to, like, run out, and they call the police, and we get the principal, B.B. Newworth. She's alive. She's well. She's wearing a very thick pearl necklace because <laughs> she wants you to know that she's the boss. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you don't know what you saw. We were just having a conversation. And then she infiltrates the police by infecting them. Mm-hmm. They're all so in So they're on like, it. I, it's like, once you got the, like, the cops of the town, that's it, man. No one is safe. Because even at the end, when they're all trying to get out, it's like, that's where it spreads. And, like, the, the police have, like, blocked off the roads to leave town. Yup. Yup. So, um, after this, Casey enlists the help of Stokely who's like, hey, you know, he's like, hey, man, you, like, read a lot of this science shit. You know, like, what's the deal? Like, body snatchers talk to me. And she's like, well, they were pods, but the book that that's based on, they it was, like, a parasite. And they're like, wait, that thing in the classroom. So they go. Delilah is there. And then we got Zeke and the new chick, Mary Beth. They were, like, canoodling. <laughs> yeah. And they, like, invade the scene. So now, like, all of them are there, including Stan. I don't know why he was there. I think it was wandering. I yeah. Don't know. No one cares. <laughs> the point is, they're all Scooby Doo ganged up together, and alien John Stewart's like, What are you kids doing in here? They're like, just, I love how, like, all of their theories are, like, right on the money every time. Absolutely. Like, yes, it's a pod. It's It, it goes on water because, well, we find that out later, but. Yeah. But it's, still. It's attracted to water. Exactly. So, like, John Stewart attacks them. They end up chopping his fingers off, and the little tentacle thingies come out. Yeah. And then Zeke stabs him, just like in self-defense, in the eye with a pen full of scat, and he, like, explodes. Yeah. Yuck. So that's how we kind of know, because then they eventually head back to Zeke's meth lab. <laughs> yeah, it's in his garage. It's a whole, he's like a whole bad scientist situation that he's got going on, because he produces his own 
product. Supply. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so they figure out that the diuretic that's in his uh stuff scat. His scat uh is what's drying out the parasite that's living inside the teachers and eventually students. And so that's how they defeat it because it dries it out. Exactly. Because they're all attracted to water, which is why they're latching on to humans. Right. But now they all are, like, paranoid of each other. Like, well, are you an alien? Are you an alien? Now oh, that we know. And this is the best scene of the movie. I agree. I agree. <laughs> because it's an homage to the thing, Absolutely. which I love. It's the best. Because they've kind of been separated and then together and then separated at this point. So they want to make sure, before they kind of trust each other, that none of them has been infected with this parasite. So they decide to snort some of the scat. And it's great because they're all, like, so hesitant because it's, like, a lot of scab they have to snort. Yeah, it's a lot. But uh, they end up doing so, and once it gets to, like, Mary Beth, I think Mary Beth and Delilah are the last to do it. Mary Beth's kind of like, okay, so we kind of see her do it. But she was a little hesitant at first because she said something about how she could barely take aspirin without, yeah. like, tweaking. I don't know. She's a pussy. Well, then it gets to Delilah, who we think up to this point has been fine because she's been, like, in cahoots with Casey. But no... She's not. <laughs> Twist. She's an alien, man. Ugh, and she destroys everything in the lab. So now they're running on, like, a very limited supply of scat, whereas before they had a lot more to, like, work with. Yeah. So they have to think smarter and harder. No, smarter. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. I obviously don't know. I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, so they're like, well. New theory. <laughs> new theory. The, the gym teacher's been acting real weird. He is probably the queen. <laughs> so they, they figure, you know, if, like, you chop the head off the snake, it, it dies or whatever the thing is. So they're like, we gotta defeat the head alien and everyone else will go back to normal. So we hope. So they head where, you say? To where everyone in town is gathered. Literally everyone. The football game. Yeah. It's at the school. It's at night. They all pile in Zeke's piece of shit car. I don't know if it's a piece of shit. Car people, is it a piece of shit? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. He's it got, is like, by the end of it, yeah, you yeah. it. He's got, like, bootleg porn in his trunk. But, uh, so they all go, and they do what people always do in a horror movie. White people, they, they split up. <laughs> they split up. So they're like, you guys go here, and we're gonna go here. Right? Yeah, because then they end up meeting up in the gym, and that's when the principal catches them. So then they're like, maybe it's the principal, and they kill her. But there's, like, a hesitation, because she almost, like, seems, like, we know that she's obviously been infected, but there's, like, a moment where she seems genuinely, like, human, and then they, like, kill her, kill her, and then they, like, oh, yeah, no, she's definitely infected. Right. Which... They don't show her at the end of the movie, so I'm like, did she go back to normal? Because she, they did shoot her in the head. No, I think that she did. But see, like, Famke Jansen, she gets decapitated. Oh, yeah. And she's alive, so... Oh, maybe. It's Inconsistencies, you know? That's interesting. I would think right. that she wouldn't be alive. But then Jon Stewart's alive, too, at the I, end. I, I and know. he's been stabbed in the eye. <laughs> so where's B.B. Newworth? They said, fuck her. <laughs> you suck. But, yeah, so they, they kill her, she's an alien, they go, and they're like, ugh, we're trying to look outside, but because the game was getting, like, let out or rained out, I don't remember, they're like, oh my god, everyone's sleeping, how are we gonna know? Uh, but they see, like, the football coach out there, and Stan's like, I'm gonna go, give me some scat, I'm gonna get the scoop on that. So he goes out, and he's like, what's up, guys? But no, it's, nope, it's a bad situation, he does not get through it. Because no. when he comes back, and he's like, guys, let me in, you know, it's... It's Stanny boy, you know me, the resident ginger of the group. <laughs> the resident ginger. <laughs> they said, take that scat. And he said, no, I, no, absolutely not. I'm going to pour it on the it's ground. It's just amazing how quickly all of the, like, they just get infected. And yeah. it's like, one minute they're fine, the next, like, oh, fuck. And they're very convincing. That's the problem. That's mm -hmm. why it's a good thing that they have this, like, pen jacked up with this stuff. Because, like, ready to go. Because it's all, ugh, so, it's crazy. I know. So, while all this is happening, we've got Stokely and Mary Beth alone in the gymnasium. And Mary Beth's like, I'm an alien. And Stokely's like, what? Yeah. And, I mean, she, like, says it, but doesn't say she it. She has, like, a whole, like, monologue about people, like, acting like 
different than who they really are and all this thing all these things she's like oh my god isn't it crazy that like aliens are among us right Mm -hmm. now and you wouldn't even you don't even know you can't even you don't even know that's a good scene though when, it is. when she attacks her and then they go in the pool and then okay this thing is fucking huge okay but wait a minute okay but wait a minute because i got issues here i wrote it down because it issued me so bad it, it issued you. me <laughs> <laughs> it disturbed me so bad they know that this thing loves water thrives in water why do her because like casey bursts through um at the last minute why do stokely and casey run through the pool Knowing that this water-loving alien is chasing them. That is dumb moves. Yeah. The only thing I could think of is maybe in the moment they were like, Oh, fuck, we gotta get out of here! Because the thing is huge! It's huge. It's It's bigger than all of the other, like... Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It reminds me so much of Resident Evil Code Veronica, which if none of you have played it, there's, like, a giant... I'm not joking. It's a penis-shaped monster with arms. (laughs) And it gets really big, and then at one point, like, it's in a swimming pool, but it's, like, electric. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, it reminded me of that. Yeah. But, yeah, I was like, why the fuck would you lead this water-loving creature... To the water. To the water. Yeah. Run to the hallway. So, it, like, Casey makes it out, but Stokely gets grabbed by the alien, and she, her face gets slammed in the tile. It looks real painful. It's real mm-hmm. bloody. I thought she was going to miss some teeth. Yeah, well, even before this happens is when Zeke and Casey go to get the... Because they run out of the drugs after Stan, like, pulls oh, yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when they find Miss Burke, who has been beheaded. <laughs> well, yeah. they end up fighting with her, and, like, the entire football team is, like, chasing them around the school. Yeah, it's, like, real intense, because they, like, again, split up, um, like, some, like, mitosis shit, yeah. and um, basically Casey is the, like, the decoy so like the football team is chasing him jordana brewster is chasing him zeke gets to his car while they're all chasing casey and miss burke's like hey it's me i'm hot now and i'm gonna fuck that was her glow up moment i know it was great her bangs are so awful but yeah what can you do at least she has confidence now yeah but she fights with zeke and he crashes his car into a bus which doesn't kill him but like throws Miss Burke through the windshield and the bus explodes I think so like her body's like Wah! and then she's somehow decapitated but her head gr- sprouts little alien legs and it's like, like crawling uh, uh it, yeah it that's great okay <laughs> it's that I don't know it was like the head the head's the power supply <laughs> Zeke is like fuck this I'm off <laughs> right like, he won't even entertain this idea but then when he gets back I think him and Casey meet up and that's when Zeke gets knocked out and then Casey goes in and that's when he goes into the pool and is like oh fuck because yeah. then he sees the magnitude of the situation it's awful and there's like a whole chase into the locker room where uh Mary Beth is like now naked because she transformed back into her human self but she doesn't have any clothes on. Yeah. And she's calling out to Stokely. Stokely. And then Zeke comes in and he's like, oh. And uh, Mary Beth's like, hey, she's the alien. And Stokely's like, no, she's the alien. And Josh Hartnett's like, you're naked. <laughs> That's weird, right? You are not very convincing. <laughs> right. Hey, why are you naked? And she's like, oops. Um. Yeah, I'm the, okay. Oh, you got, all right, I'm the <laughs> I've been got. <laughs> yeah, I got, try to play it off, though. So then there's, like, another chase scene, and, like, Stokely is infected, and she's locked in a cage, and then Zeke gets knocked out. So then it's basically up to Casey. Hell yeah, our and hero. God bless his beautiful little soul. He chases her through the bleachers, but he, like, makes that so they start retracting yeah and then she's like a big fat alien who gets stuck and then he sticks her in the eye with the scat and she's like blah, blah, blah. he gets infected though like right as he's doing it like all the wormies go all yeah. over his face but because he's stabbing her in the eye and killing her they like fall back out of his face yeah so he's like now normal yeah and then we cut to like a month later everyone is back to normal everything's chill famke jansen is still alive John Stewart, still alive. The football coach, still alive. He seems like the, the same, though. Yeah. <laughs> he was just always angry. He's just drinking less water now. More alcohol. More rage The thing that's weird, though, to me in this 
in this moment is we see that Zeke is now like a football player and like we see Miss Burke like watching him from the stands and they're giving each other like fuck me eyes mm-hmm. and I'm like are they together? Probably. I mean I know he's older than he's everybody in my senior. high school but like he's 26 <laughs> frowned upon <laughs> He is 30 years old. She's, oh God. But there, he's still a student. Yeah, no. I feel like I, that's still, like, not a thing. It's but, like, well, whatever. It, it's, not, it's not good for her. It's not yeah. good for her, but it's great for him. Good for him. And uh, then Casey is with Delilah, which is, I think, weird, weird because, she, I don't know. Yeah. And then Stokely's with Stan. Also and she's weird. not goth now. She's, like, in a floral purple dress and, like, cardigan situation, this a la, tw- like, this movie is never been kissed. Club. <laughs> yeah. Just like Josie Grossy after her glow up. <laughs> Very confused. Everyone's like roll reverse. So it's kind of like the end of Mean Girls where they're like, school used to be a shark tank, but now we can just float. And now everyone gets along. <laughs> yeah, it's so fucking weird. And then that that's it. Ugh. That's the movie. I love it. I love it too. It's, it's great. It's great, yeah. I mean, for like when you think of Robert Rodriguez films, you think of like the shoot 'em up ones mm-hmm. and everything. But so this was kind of like a left turn for him, I feel like. But it was great. Yeah, I loved it, and I felt like you know because they were doing a lot of like '90s slasher movies, but to like do something a little bit different and make it like an alien invasion movie was cool. I like it. I like cool it. Cool as fuck. What would you rate it? I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I like this movie. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, I I really enjoy it. I think it's solid. Good time all around. I mean, it's 90s cheese, but I think that it's still way. fun. Yeah. It's fun to laugh at, fun to look at, and it's interesting. How That's about you? Nice. I gave it a three and a half out of five. Woo! For the same reasons. I just, I don't know why I went three and a half out of five. <laughs> it's above average. No, it's good. It's above average. Three and a half out of five is still high. Hell yeah. Higher than most. Good time. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, next up, we're talking disturbing behavior, also from 1998. Currently has a 5.6 out of 10 on IMDb. Has a 34% on Rotten Tomatoes, which to me seems high. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Spoilers. Confession time. This was my first time watching this movie. Really? Yeah. Snap. Snap. What did you... What did you... What do you think? Just... Just... You know, we'll get into it later, but... Like overall. Pre- <laughs> overall. Um, I mean, so I watched this before I watched The Faculty. I had already okay. seen The Faculty many a time, so this was new, but I was, like, this was, I don't, like I said in the beginning, I don't know what which came first, but this was, like, straight out of the same vein as, as The Faculty. Like, almost fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, except, we'll find out, one of them was done just much better. Yeah, um. It didn't star Katie Holmes. Honestly, though, this movie kind of reminds me of, like, a late 90s version of, like, The Sepford Wives. Oh, yeah, that's definitely. The whole, like, the, oh, what the are they ribbons. called? The Blue Ribbons. Yeah, like, the whole, like, oh, we're gonna make any, like, low-life person, like, no matter how shitty you are or, like, bad of a person you are, we're going to transform you into this perfect image of a person. Yep. And it's just, like, everyone is, like, a robot. <laughs> Yep. It's so Stepford Wives to me. It's it's a weird movie. This one is less alien and, yeah, more Stepford Wives-y, but still it's about, you know, people getting turned in, from humans into something not human. The thing that I think is really funny, though, about them is, like, because a lot of it is, so most of it is in a high school, so they're dealing with, like, high school like teenagers and everything and i love that the thing that gives them away is when they get like horny yeah and it reminds me because then they start like short circuiting like a fembot I was like, <laughs> like, <"Lots of> <laughs> machine gun jubbly how did i miss those baby and i love that like that's the thing that gets them like like i don't know what the word is like Teens destroys are horny. them you know it's, yeah it's like this evil like sinister like group of people that are like in charge of these blue ribbons it's like a commentary on teens not having sex yeah because the the first shot of the movie is like a couple and they're in a car at night and they're doing things and the guy's like i don't like that tattoo yuck and i need my fluids and she's like i'll 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 get your fluids or something (laughs) and she starts you know like Doing. doing things and he snaps her neck and he's like fucking slow <laughs> i was like wow okay all right i guess it wasn't very satisfactory 
Shit. The opening credits of this movie are like 20 minutes long. I know. It's, I it's had to a skim lo- through, man. The oh. movie's not even that long. No, it's an hour and 20 minutes, and half 20 of that is credits. Of, 20 minutes of it is credits. Yes. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And it's all this like weird music where it's like, pew, 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 pew. Pew, pew, pew. It's so fucking weird. Oh, my God. So we have our cast, which is a very... They're all really young, so I shouldn't even say the very young. Although James Morrison looks the same. Yeah. He looks 30. He he looks... He ages like Paul Rudd, man. He does. But maybe that's the thing. If you have an old-looking face when you're young, then when you age, you have the same face. Yeah, maybe. So you're just growing into your face. Ethan Embry's in this movie, and I love Ethan Embry. Um, he's, he's not in it he's very a much, baby. though. No, he's not. He's, like, the... He plays James Morrison's brother, who... Uh, has died by suicide. I think so. And uh, then we have Catherine Isabel, who plays his sister, Ginger Snaps. I know, a little baby. <laughs> I know. Before Ginger Snaps, before Freddy versus Jason, yeah. before American Mary. Yeah. We've got this piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they're basically James Marsden's family. Uh, because of his brother's death, they wanted to get a fresh new start. You know, it's the same. 90s beginning yeah. thing with somebody leaving a town to get away and start a new life somewhere else. And they're from Chicago. Hey! hey. Which is so funny because when he gets to his new school, everyone's like, oh my god, you're from Chicago, oh my god. And I was like, nobody says that when I say I'm from Chicago. They're like, oh, murder capital. <laughs> ah, see any shootings lately? <laughs> right. Oh, fun. What's that like? Deep dish pizza and hey, murder. Hey, hey. Don't you da- talk bad about our deep dish pizza. It's delicious. It's divine. We, and it's, let us have it. It's the only thing we have, please. It's the only thing that keeps me going. <laughs> uh, uh, so yes. that's fun. Shootings. <laughs> we, we immediately get, and I. it was taken directly from Mean Girls. Like, the director of this movie got in a time machine, saw Mean Girls in theaters, saw the cafeteria breakdown. Oh my god, I was thinking like, the same thing! Yeah. yeah. He's like, shit, I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna get that first. So, he meets, and what's his name? Greg? Steve. His name's Steve. Steve. Nick Skull! <laughs> uh, no, Steve is James Marsden. What's his name? Uh, oh my god! Gavin. Gavin. Gavin is Nick Stahl. He meets him and his albino friend, UV. <laughs> I love UV. I know. He's the most corpsey character in this movie. Uh, the best him. is, like, at the end when he's like, how do I know you're you? What's the capital? Or what's the capital of North Dakota? How the fuck should I know? All uh, right. Cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he spends the majority of this movie just repeating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> repeating or reacting to somebody else's line. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, right on, man. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Every time. I think he was actually stoned when they were making this movie. I do believe that. I do believe that. Uh, so okay, but I like Gavin, though. I do, too. I love his, like, quippy little dialogue. He's my favorite yeah. character in this movie. Definitely, for sure. Yeah. They're like, so over there you got your jocks, your nerds, your dweebs, your stoners, your burnouts, your computer geeks. You got the, <laughs> the coolest people you will ever meet and the worst. <laughs> Beware of the plastic <coughs> blue ribbons. <laughs> no, literally. That is exactly word for word how it goes. Yup. Like to a T. Yeah, they're like, so good uh, job on that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. They're like, yeah, they do like bake sales and shit and they're like, stand up citizens of the community and Lorna is Gavin's like dream lady um, but she's a blue ribbon and he's I love how you know, he like participation ribbon and I love how he gives his like suspicions on them right away like he like gives him the what for of these blue ribbons man they are robots and we're not convinced because you know he used to be friends with a few of them yep. he's like they changed they wanted nothing to do with me and now they become these like model citizens they weren't always like that Blue robots. What's in the water, man? Exactly. <laughs> it's in the water. <laughs> it's great. And then we meet a very, also very young Katie Holmes, who is goth. <laughs> she sucks. Okay, I hate her character. It's awful. They said, Katie Holmes, we want you to wear a fake nose ring and some eyeliner, and we want you to say shit like, sounds razor. Ain't nobody say that <laughs> shit. That makes no sense. She says it several times in this movie, and every time I say, you should go fuck yourself. Don't say that. You are stupid. And also, she drives, like, a truck, and she's just dancing in it in the back, like, just by herself. Hey, that's, that's what you do, man. That's, <laughs> that's 
that's weird, right? Like, no, that's it is weird. weird. She, she's not really given, I'm not really sure why she's in this movie, I guess, to be the love interest, but, like. She has no personality. Yeah, like, she doesn't do much. No. Nah. There's a, just a lot of, like, like, a lot of panning shots to her eyes. Yeah, exactly. Which are, like, dead inside. <laughs> yeah, so there's like no nothing. light behind them. And this was pre Tom Cruise. I don't know what her deal is. I know. You know? But yeah, she just says they don't she's not given a lot for the movie, so there's like really no point to her being there besides just being another person. She was like a hot nineties commodity, so they said, We'll take it. Yeah. We need something successful to market this movie. Exactly. Katie Holmes is in. So whatever. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So yeah. she she sucks, but Steve is into it. The other thing I'll say about this movie is it's very heavily soundtracked oh my <laughs> there is so much soundtrack and there's, there's more soundtrack and music in this movie than actual dialogue it's cr- so like i i made a note of this because i've i've seen this movie i think like two or three times uh it's not my favorite but this movie it's like it's kind of like dark ish kind like they try to make it seem like dark and moody and it's like Ooh, what's Very happening? and they go so like Moving ahead a little bit, like, they find, yeah, they are aliens, and there's, like, this hospital where, like, the doctor is turning all these people into aliens, and it's, like, a psych ward, and there's all these crazy people, and they, like, come across the doctor's daughter, who's, like, a nut, like, she's... Straight up crazy. Yeah. And so they're, like, we gotta get out of here, and then it cuts to, like, like, a typical 90s comedy, like, it reminded me of Detroit Rock City when they're, like, escaping the school, (laughs) and they're playing flagpole (laughs) sit-up as they, like, that's a... This, it was, like, a funny, that, it just didn't fit the vibe. Like, that's yeah. the song you picked? They just put all of the 90s cover songs into, like, this movie. They yeah. just jammed them all in. When they, It's like they didn't have enough script, so they threw in a lot of soundtrack. Yeah. It was, like, something that they could cut, like, a good trailer out of. Yeah. Very you know? music video-esque, because then there's a lot of slow motion shots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's crazy. It's fucking weird. I had to talk about it, though, because I was like, oh my god! It's so true. I swear there's a straight 15 minutes in the middle of this movie where nothing is said. Yeah! It's just eyes and soundtrack. It's eyes and flagpole. <laughs> Ex- exactly, exactly. So, like, I, it's a lot of, like... They're talking about the blue ribbon, and, like, there's this wiener kid, um, Dicky, who, like, gets in a fight with the blue ribbon, and now he's, like, one of them, and they're like, what happened to you, man? You used to be cool, and now you're a blue ribbon. Well, and it's especially because he is very, you can tell he's, like, super into his, his, like, fancy car and everything, and then, like, in the next scene, after he's become one of them, he's, like, destroying his own car. He's literally, like, standing on the hood, smashing the shit out of it, and everyone's like, okay, weirdo. And then we've got the janitor who, if I'm not mistaken, I didn't look it up to back this up, so um, please don't come for me. But the janitor is played by the main guy, or one of the main guys from Demon Knight. I'm fairly certain that's him. Like the guy, like the the priest guy with the little cross. I think. I, mean, I think so. I think. I think that's him. I think him. he is. But he's like really weird. Um, he is like real into the rats. There's, like, oh. an issue with the rats. He's like Willard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he has these machines where, like, they emit this sound, which is supposed to keep the rats away, but it doesn't really irritate the rats. But we come to find out that it does, like, affect the robots. So that's going to be, like, our weapon against them. Mm. Um, at a cult meeting somewhere in town, Gavin and Steve infiltrate and see, like, all these parents gathering, and they find out the next victim is going to be Gavin. Like, his parents sold him out, and they're like, yeah, we're going to fix him up real good. So Gavin's like, Steve, you got to help me. Like, I got a gun, and Steve takes it. And then the next day at school, we see that um, Gavin is one of the Blue Ribbons. And Katie Holmes... Which is so devastating. I know. Because we're like, oh my god. At first, like, because this is my first time watch, I was thinking, like, oh my god, maybe he's just, like, faking it so that he can get more Same. intel. But no! He's actually one of them, and it's so devastating, because he was such a, like, cool character before. I know. And ah. he's, he's hanging out with, like, those wiener kids, and there's, like, a guy that's really into Katie Holmes, who's a blue ribbon. He looks like 90s Jonah Hill. Like, just straight up not it. Yeah. Um, but like, Katie Holmes, I don't know, she thinks she's gonna fix the situation by going, Gavin! And he's like, go away. And she's like, <laughs> Gavin and he's like I said go away and she's like okay fine good job (laughs) yeah you really put your all into that one I'm very impressed 
Yeah. Uh, and then there's, like, a cafeteria brawl. I don't know. It's just, like, a lot of scenes that, like, I really could give a shit about. Like, I don't really know. Mm-hmm. And then there's, like, Lorna. She's over at Steve's house one day. I feel oh, like I'm... it's, like, a weird seducing scene. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't, like, because we... But that's when we discover that that's, like, kind of what gets them to, like, be all discombobulated is exactly. because, like, she starts taking her clothes off. And it's, like, it's almost like the human part of her kind of wants to come out because she obviously has a crush on him. Mm-hmm. And so it's, like, that part of her that's, like, left is, like, oh, like, I really want to get with you. But then she starts saying, like, well, but I know that it's not, like, right. Right. Like, it's not right of me to do that and I can't do that. It's forbidden. And he's, like, what? And then she starts getting all horny, and, like, then she sort short circuits. Right. Her, like, tits are out, and she's like, good, bad, bad, good. <laughs> she's glitching. Yeah. yeah. He's and like, he's what like, the what? fuck? Yeah. She smashes her head into, like, a mirror, and then she, like, is bleeding, and then she's like, oh, I have a test tomorrow. I'm I think just... I'm gonna head out. Right, and it leaves, like, head out. <laughs> nips are still out, and she's like, bye. <laughs> Oh. I don't know, man. This movie's fucking weird. But it's just interesting that, like, that was, there was, like, that human part of her that kind of came out, so it's, like, it gives me hope for Gavin, okay? I know. I know. Well, and it's, like, so weird, too, because, like, this whole movie, it seems like they're fighting for answers for Gavin. Yeah. You know, like, they hop on a ferry at some point to, like, investigate this the asylum. Facility, yeah. Because Gavin leaves... The tape. The tape, yes, for Katie Holmes. And he was like, hey, man, if you're watching this, <laughs> God, the, I got God. <laughs> he's like, he knew what was going to happen. I know. Which is so surprising, because he, like, knew what was going on, but had, like, no plan to protect himself. Yeah. That's weird. I know. But he, he was like, safe until this point, but, yeah, then yeah. they find out it's all, like, mind control. Yeah. At this facility. Sucks. It's uh, a pretty long scene when they're at the facility. It's really There's long. a lot of running. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like, I don't even know. Like, while they were on the ferry, too, Katie Holmes is like, I just want Gavin back. He was, like, a brother to me. And then, um, it's just, like, really weird that after that, you really don't hear about Gavin anymore. Like, they're at this facility. They don't, like, look for him. I'll definitely say that this movie took a different turn once he turned. Yeah. Like, I feel like it was, like, I was enjoying it. And then when he turned, because he was, like, the good in the movie, I felt like. Like, he was the thing, because of his quippy dialogue and everything, and he made it, like, entertaining almost, because you never know, like, what the fuck he was gonna say, because he was always just, like, such a smart ass. Yeah. But then when he turned, and we didn't have him in the movie anymore, it was kind of like, meh. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. Because I don't care about Katie Holmes, and... Well, because, yeah, Katie Holmes has no personality, and James right. Marsden, it's not like, I, it's not that like I don't like him, he just didn't offer enough. Right. Right. To the movie to be entertaining, you right? Know? And there's like a weird like semi rape scene with like '90s Jonah Hill and Katie Holmes. Like they're <laughs> really trying to drive home the fact that he's like, I want you. Oh yeah. You know, I don't know that a lot of the things that they put in this movie, I just feel like. But that was so really re- weird it? how like that happened, and it came so close to like being actual like rape. It was like, like, and then she just got over it. <laughs> right. I. Like, he definitely assaulted how. her. Yeah. <laughs> and then she just, in, like, the next scene, she was completely fine. Right, and, like, she's like, sounds razor, let's go. Yeah, like, what? But, like, do we need that scene, then? Right. It's so weird. Basically, that scene just served as a purpose to show that, like, when the rat got near the machine, he was like, blah, 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 like, short-circuiting. Yeah. You know, or, like, getting at least irritated. Yeah. By it. So then the janitor was like, oh, yes, this is the answer. It's the ra- it's the rats. Yeah. Or the machine. I don't know. He's crazy. Well, they end up catching Steve and Katie Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so then, the, the, it's, it's almost reminded me of Get Out with their whole, like, yes. contraption with the eyeball and everything. Like, how they're, like, doing their whole mind control biz. But they end up getting out. I know. Yeah, it was, like, a combination of Get Out and, like, a Clockwork Orange. Yeah, because they, know? like, forced their eye open. Exactly. It was fucking weird. Yeah, so yeah. Steve, like, manages to get out because there's... They've been so careful up to this point, it seems, but now there's just, like, a rogue... Did, like, did he bring that? The What is it? A, it's not a syringe. It's not a stylus. What is it? Like, the little the little mini knife for surgery. It's the surgical oh, knife. Oh, a scalpel? A scalpel, yeah. Because <laughs> he just, like, has a scalpel now. Oh, yeah. When he's yeah. in that chair. Like, where did I that come from? I don't know he grabbed that. Right. So that just seemed really, like, messy on their part. But he, like, so he gets out before he gets brainwashed. 
He saves Katie Holmes, who, like, is sweaty. <laughs> They're just, like, real out. sweaty. Yeah. And she's the, oh, my God, she's the goddamn worst. Because he, like, wakes her up. He's like, hey, we gotta go. Like, get up. And she's like, oh, oh. And he's literally dragging her limp ass, useless <laughs> body through the fucking halls of this asylum. I was like, I would have been like, man, fuck you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> dead weight. You're weighing me down, man. Yeah. And then we get, like, the, you know, 90s Jonah Hill at the vending machine. It's like, burr, burr, burr. that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Let her go. Let's grab boobies. Yeah. <laughs> so then they fight, and I think he kills 90s Jonah Hill. I don't remember. Yeah. Well, okay, so then so then they get out, and the thing that gets me is, like, so these Blue Ribbon people, you know, they're sneaky. Up to this point, they've been, like, infiltrating people's minds and, like, on the low. You know, they have secret meetings and everything. But now, all of a sudden... <laughs> The entire town, or half the town, which is now, you know, being mind controlled, part of the Blue Ribbons, like, lines up all down the road to stop them from getting out of town. Yeah, it's like us. It's like the end of us with, like, the fucking Hands Across America thing. I'm just like, what? Like, all of you people decided to get together for these two people? I know. Like, who gives a shit? You're blowing your cover. Just pretend that they're paranoid. Or just get them at another time. Exactly. There will be more Well, I guess now they've seen too much, so they all got wind of it. It's ridiculous. But if there's only one way out of town, which is on a ferry, they should all be at the ferry. Right. Are you stupid? (laughs) Ugh. So, like, they end up escaping because the janitor does, like, some Pied Piper business. William Sadler. Yes, yes. He, like, le- he he's driving, like, an El Camino <laughs> with all these machines in the back, and he turns them on, and they're like, ah! and they start chasing him, so then it leaves them alone, and I don't, like, is this when UV picks him up? Because UV is with his sister. Yeah, well, because that, now that they know that the par- his parents are, like, fucked. Yeah, they're in on it. They're in on it, so they know, so they all... The four of them, UV, his sister, Steve, and then Katie Holmes, they all try to, like, get to the ferry to get out of town because fuck this place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think that's when he goes. But then he, they go on ahead to the ferry. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, don't leave without me. Yeah. Sure, Jan. And then Steve fights off, um, what's his name? The doctor guy. The doctor guy. Mm-hmm. The main dude that's in charge of the whole thing. Yeah. And the janitor... He leads all of the other blue ribbons off the cliff because he's been shot. So he's like, "I'm no good anymore." Man. I love this really CGI cliff. It's I like, know. I it's great. Oh my god! So we're like, "Oh my god, that's great!" All of the blue ribbons have been destroyed, and he finds a a, a motorbike, or had a motor. He stole a motor. He's on a motorbike, <laughs> and he rides to the ferry, and he just like makes the jump so perfectly onto that ferry and he's like where are you bonnie and katie holmes is there and uv's there with his sister and it's like ah we're gonna go to chicago i think hey where it seems much safer (laughs) yeah exactly uh but then we're we're at some like inner city school I think some yeah, yeah like some all the all the bad kids you yeah. know and they're like hey we got a new student teacher and guess who it is Gavin he's a robot he made it out and he's infiltrating town by town yeah which it just like it seems weird to me that after all this like I miss Gavin he's like a brother they they don't they're they're not like where's Gavin Oh, yeah, Gavin, he was our friend. What happened to that guy? That. Yeah. That seems weird to me. Well, maybe they just assumed he went over the cliff with the other Maybe. People. But, you know, I just, don't know. It's an odd choice. Like, I get the, the cliffhanger, but... I don't so know, who's going to buy him? He's in high school. How can he be a teacher? Right. <laughs> who's buying this? Ooh, I got questions. I got more questions than I care to even want answers to <laughs> yeah well that's the problem though this is the problem with the movie it is it was going pretty strong it had the 90s cheese that i love i love a good 90s cheese moment but then like like i said after gavin got i know then it wasn't as good of a movie anymore and that's it, it sucks it's just tragic i feel like this movie was like it was playing 
It was playing with darts, and then after, like, after Gavin gets got, it's like they just started throwing limp spaghetti at the board instead, and they were like, yeah, that's a good idea. And I did read a little bit about this movie, that there were a lot of cuts to it, which you can kind of see, because, like, a lot of those random scenes that we were talking about were like, okay, so you can definitely see that it got cut, and, like, the director of the movie, I guess there's a director's cut, which is apparently better than everything that got released. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if it, you can, like... I don't even know if you can, like, watch it anywhere. I did find out, though, that the director of this movie is David Nutter, who... Nutter. (laughs) Who also did, like, wrote for episodes of Game of Thrones and X-Files. And X-Files, I can believe, because this movie reminded me of X-Files, so... But Game of Thrones was such a... Wait, was it, like, the last season of Game of Thrones, or was it, like, the I have no idea. (laughs) Because I believe one of those. Yeah. That's did, like, ten episodes. What the fuck? I know. Well, maybe this was like a jump, you know, it's like everyone's got to start somewhere. Yeah. This was somewhere. But as soon as I read X-Files, I was like, ah, yeah. (laughs) Makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, unfortunately, I don't know. (sighs) This movie blows dogs for (laughs) (laughs) What would you rate this movie? I was generous. I gave it a two out of five. I also gave it a two out of five because it started out strong for me. I really enjoyed it. I knew going in that you didn't really care for it, but I was like, okay, this isn't so bad. And then after that, I was like, I know, I know. It's like, it's real promising for the first few bits. And then afterwards, it's like, it's all right. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, It's tragic, but I watched these two movies so close together. The first time I saw both of them. That I, like, I literally was like, was this not the same movie with a different cast? <laughs> but the cast? faculty was just better. <laughs> it was just better. It was just, like, well done. We've got Kevin Williamson on our side. That's true. Not this nutter butter <laughs> guy. <laughs> Ugh. I will say, though, if you're going to watch either of these movies, well, I mean, I guess if you're going to watch Disturbing Behavior, do it as a double feature with this with the faculty because it, they were enjoyable as a double feature. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, even though one was definitely better than the other, because they're so, like, close yeah. in theme. One is, like, Coca-Cola, and the other is, like, President's Choice. Like, R.C. <laughs> yeah. Right, the ideas are there. But oh, God, I'm gonna get ones. canceled for blaspheming <laughs> R.C. I know there's a lot of passionate people. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares. It's like fucking Shasta or Fago. People like that shit, though. I don't know. I don't know. Who cares? I President's Choice. Nobody it's cares. great value, Brando. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Don't cancel me, Walmart. One of them is Whole Foods. The other is... Kmart? Kmart. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not good. You don't want your produce from there. Uh, also get your shots. <laughs> Honestly, and wash your fruit. All right, guys, that's going to be it for us today. Let us know what you think of both the faculty and disturbing behavior. Which one do you prefer? How would you rate them? You can let us know by following us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Fright Mike Podcast. If you're interested in hearing more from us, we do have a Patreon. Just head over to FrightMike.com slash Patreon. So or, a lot of good stuff sorry, over there. Sorry, Patreon.com slash FrightMike. We do have bonus episodes that we do every month. And uh, if, you know, if you're in the mood and you're able to, um, you can uh, throw us a review wherever you do listen to podcasts. Five you, star. Yeah, only five <laughs> star. <laughs> We would highly appreciate it to get our name out there and get more spooky listeners like yourselves. Um, but yeah, we hope that you'll enjoy it this whole month long of high school hell, high school Woo! themed horror. Let us know what you think we're going to be covering because, you know, some there might be some there. surprises. But until next time, I'm Liz. I'm Sam. Rest, Rest in peace. peace.